Welcome to the Vermont Urban and Community Forestry Program's Winter Webinar, Seven Habits of Highly Effective Tree Boards. I'm Caitlin Cusack, and I work for the Vermont Urban and Community Forestry Program, a partnership between UVM Extension and Vermont Department of Forest Parks and Recreation. I will, I will be moderating this evening. Our presenter tonight is Paul Reese. Paul manages the Urban Forest Forestry Program for the Oregon Department of Forestry and teaches urban forestry at Oregon, Oregon State University. He created and directs a statewide program that provides technical, financial, and educational urban forestry assistance to communities and organizations. Paul previously served as an urban forester for the city of Cincinnati and as executive director of ISA's Pacific Northwest chapter. Paul holds a master's de degree from The Ohio State University and has been in an ISA member and a certified arborist since 1988. Paul has a great interest in leadership and continuing education and has served as a project developer for several innovative educational efforts, including the Municipal Forestry Institute, the Online Tree Board University, and a new online boriculture course through Oregon State University. Paul, we're really great to, glad to have you, so welcome, and I'll now turn the mic over to you for tonight's presentation. Well, thank you. I appreciate uh, being invited and uh, uh, more so uh, sparing me the flight uh, clear across the country to present in person. This is uh, a good way to do this, I think. So I'm uh, glad to uh, uh, be a part of your uh, winter series, and I hope that this uh, presentation here will uh, pique your interest to want to learn more about this particular subject. Let me um, first say that uh, even though this uh, may seem uh, a bit formal in that uh, we're in an online environment and I'm presenting in PowerPoint, uh, I do want to encourage you to uh, ask questions throughout. Uh, don't feel like you have to hold questions to the end. If there's a question I can answer uh, sort of on the fly, type it in that chat box and we'll try to handle it between myself and the moderator. We'll try to handle it um, uh, as we go along. So let's talk about uh, the seven habits of highly effective tree boards. Um, get my uh, page going here. Um, an outline for this presentation t uh, tonight, what I hope to do is talk a little bit about this concept of seven habits briefly. Of course, I'm borrowing that from uh, the late Stephen Covey's popular book series. Uh, talk about what does it really mean to be effective? What does that word mean? And how, why and how do we apply that concept to the realm of tree boards? And then where do you get help to become more effective? So that's kind of where we're headed this evening in this presentation. Let's start off with talking about effectiveness. What does effectiveness mean? Well, there's a lot of different ways to consider this particular word. You could look it up in the dictionary and get a sort of a dictionary de definition. But it's probably more instructive to talk about what does effectiveness look like? What does it mean to be effective? And really, what's the difference between effectiveness or being effective and being efficient? One way to look at it would be that um, efficiency is doing things right, but effectiveness is doing the right things. So while you need to be both efficient and effective, as an organization, you want to be doing things right, but you also want to be doing the right things. That's what we're going to talk about today. In Stephen Covey's book, one of the ways he describes effectiveness is he says something about the fact you can climb a ladder and you can do that effectively or efficiently, but if it's, if it's leaning against the wrong wall, then you haven't been very effective now, have you? So that kind of puts it into context a little bit to help us understand what it means to be effective. Now, when we talk about uh, effectiveness and the realm of tree boards, what we're really talking about is the idea of group dynamics. Now, group dynamics describes how groups interact with each other. In the context of a tree board, we want to talk about how does a tree board function, how does it accomplish its goals, how does it add value to a municipal urban forestry program. Now, we might talk about group dynamics from, this, from starting out understanding, again, our terms and talking about what does it mean to be a group versus a team, let's say. Well, a group is really a... Uh, a collection of people who share overhead, let's say, in pursuit of their individual task assign, uh, accomplishments. But a team, on the other hand, works to uh, achieve a common purpose. They have a common goal. The fundamental difference in this is that a team has interaction among its members that are all sort of leading in the same direction. And if you're a part of a, of a group, you really want that group to function as a team because you're going to be able to achieve more 
uh, in that in that way than you would if you had just been a group of people who sort of just share a common interest. Now, when we talk about tree boards, those are a type of team, or we want them to be a type of teams that accomplish some work that uh, work together to accomplish a goal. And we realize that in urban forestry, almost everything we do requires partnerships or committees or some sort of group work. Now, teams, we realize that teams can be more effective in groups because they work for that common goal. They have that, that um, uh, end in mind. And they are what we would say it would be synergistic. In other words, they can achieve more as a team than the individuals could achieve collectively if they weren't working together. So tree boards are a very common form of work team um, in urban forestry. So let's talk about why t teams might be less than effective. There are really a number of, of different uh, topics or different uh, reasons why uh, teams, in this case tree boards, let's say, would struggle. Part of those would be things like having a poorly defined mission, not necessarily being certain about what it is they're trying to accomplish. A lack of sponsorship support, in this case, uh, on behalf of the city government, typically, that they're serving. Um, they might have poor member selection or recruitment. In other words, they don't have the right mix of people there that are going to help them achieve their goals. They might not have goals. They might not have clear goals, a lack of direction. They might also not have accountability. In other words, they might not have the, um, uh, the right um, measures in place to really gauge uh, what it is they're doing. They might have a lack of fun and good humor. And keep in mind, teams in a, in, in a situation like this are volunteers. So tree board volunteers are people who have time to give, but not time to waste. So they want to be able to work in an environment where, they're, where they are appreciated, where there are um, well-run meetings, and where it's, uh, there's a social component to that as well. And then finally, another reason why teams might be less than effective are hidden and sometimes not so hidden agendas. If different uh, members of your tree board have um, agendas that run somewhat contrary to what the greater group as a whole has, that can be problematic in what you're trying to accomplish as a tree board. So let's talk about six characteristics of teams that work. And this comes from a a, um, a management consultant by the name of Tom Shampoo. You can look at his website up. It's called the Effectiveness Institute. It's out of Seattle, Washington. Tom says that there are six characteristics of teams that really work or teams that excel, teams that achieve. And that's really what you want your tree board to do. First, they have a high level of trust. The members trust each other. Um, Trust is, uh, is an important factor. It's earned. It's not something that's just given. Um, and for you to be able to trust someone means that you know them well enough that they will act in your best interest even when you're not there, for example. So if you have uh, uh, a fear of going to meetings because you might get volunteered to do something because you weren't there, there might be a lack of trust there. Um, a high level of respect. Again, like trust, respect has to, has to be earned. Um, in situations like tree boards, things can become contentious. This isn't always the case, but um, sometimes it is. I actually facilitated a tree board retreat once for a, a community where the chair had been elected chair on a four to three vote. And let me tell you, if you have a, such a great disagreement about who should be uh, on a rotation of chair in your tree board, there's probably deeper, deeper um, problems that you have than just uh, trust and respect. Number three would be a commitment to a clear and common purpose. Now, some of this is outlined in, a, in the documents that create a tree board. You, for example, if a city has an ordinance that says the tree board shall be consisted of X number of people and they should operate in their role, some of that is very, very clear. But other tree boards don't necessarily have that clear line of uh, delineation about what it is they're trying to achieve. One common thing that I see when I deal with tree boards is sometimes they don't have a good understanding about whether they are an advisory body or an authority body. And that's an important distinction because tree boards, all tree boards have an, an advisory role. They serve to advise the city on how to run a good urban forestry program. But they all, some, some of them, not all of them, but some of them also have an authority role. In other words, they might be the, um, the people who are deciding on a permit process or something like that. Conflict resolution. A characteristic of a team that works is that they resolve conflict. They don't 
avoid conflict. The opposite of conflict resolution is conflict avoidance. And many groups, they just push conflict um, away or underground. The problem is it always comes back at very inopportune uh, uh, moments. Number five, uh, teams that work focus on measurable results. And when we talk about measurable results, what I'm talking about here goes back to this whole idea of effectiveness. And let me give you another example to the whole efficiency effectiveness uh, model. If I were to ask you how many tree, trees your tree board was uh, uh, responsible for planting um, last year in 2012, you might tell me it was 100 or 1,000 or 10,000, whatever it happens to be. And that would be an important measurable result, how many trees you got planted. But a more important one is, how many of those trees survived? In other words, what was, your, what was your survivability rate? That's an important measure of success in determining whether or not your efforts are really working. And then finally, mutual, mutual responsibility and accountability. That means that team members can count on each other to be responsible and to be accountable for the uh, types of activities that the board accomplishes. Let's talk a little bit about cohesion, because cohesion is a critical in a, in ingredient in how tree boards get along. Now, there's, cohesion can have a lot of different um, aspects to it. You might have cohesion as a team. You might have cohesion over a task or in a social setting. But there's a lot of different uh, factors that, that focus on to how groups can be cohesive. Some of it's personnel related. Um, leadership, the team itself in terms of the composition. Some of them are environmental factors. But quite frankly, one of the things that you need to do in a tree board setting is try to determine how cohesive your group is and try to figure out ways uh, for you to be more cohesive. Now, how do you assess where you're at? How do you assess your team or your tree board? Well, you might ask some very important questions. Uh, the first question would be, do you have the right people on the bus? Now, this is an allusion to uh, Jim Collins' uh, uh, excellent book, uh, Good to Great. Uh, Collins is a management researcher, and he wrote a book about why some companies excel and others go out of business. And what he said is that you need the right people on the bus. In other words, what the bus driving your organization. But you not only need the right people, you need, they need to be in the right seats. In other words, they need to be given the right responsibilities and have the right um, sets of duties that and and tools that are going to help them be successful. You might also say, are are people being trained? In other words, are they gi being given the right tools to do what it takes to achieve? Do they have a clear sense of what is expected of them? Do they have job descriptions? Now, you might say job descriptions. Well, they don't have jobs. Well, yes, they do. If you have volunteers in your tree board, those positions should really have job descriptions to them. Even though it's not a paid job, it's a volunteer job, the idea here is that a job description helps uh, the person volunteering understand their um, expect, ex what's expected of them and also understand what it is they're supposed to be doing as a contributor to the success of that work team. And then finally, you have to ask yourself, are your volunteers aligned? In other words, is everybody on the same page with what it is that uh, the tree board is trying to achieve? Does everybody understand the mission? Can everybody uh, speak the, or say the mission? Uh, can everybody uh, articulate what the goals and objectives or the plans of the organization are uh, for the next year, for example? So why are some reasons uh, that tree boards themselves might be less than, than effective? Well, I think there's really four um, that, that I would signal, single out, and I've been dealing with tree boards for 25 years in, in urban forestry now. Uh, one would be a sort of a chronic lack of recognition or support by city council or staff. Some cities set up a tree board and set, it, set forth that in, in um, ordinance and then just expect the board to sort of just go about its work without a lot of guidance from the city. And so and that can be a problem if, uh, if, a, if a tree board is not receiving uh, proper recognition and support from the city council or from city staff people. It really can lead to frustrations. And when you have frustrations on your tree committee, you often have infighting or you have what we might call sweating the small stuff. In other words, people are, are concerned and preoccupied with minute de details and rather, rather than the big picture. Uh, the third reason might be weak leadership, and what I mean by weak leadership here is that that the organizational um, d 
development of the tree board is uh, less than desired. It doesn't have um, what it, it doesn't have the right people or the right tools or it doesn't have the right leadership philosophy to make it happen. And then finally, the poor group dynamics that I spoke of earlier. So with that, let's launch into the idea of the seven habits of highly effective tree boards. My idea here um, is basically I took Covey's seven high, uh, habits of highly effective people, and I'm not going to go into those too much, but he talks about the different things uh, that you uh, can think about if you want to be an effective uh, uh, employee, for example, or an effective leader, an effective volunteer. But I want to talk about what habits that effective tree boards themselves have. The first is that they live their mission. Um, they have well-defined roles and expectations. In other words, everyone knows what the mission of the tree board is. Everyone knows why it exists and how it contributes to the livability of that, um, <clears throat> that community, that city or town or village. And more importantly, they have that purpose that they can clearly articulate, what we might call an elevator speech. Now, if you're not familiar with an elevator speech, that's a term that has to do with your ability to convey what it is you're all about in a very concise, jargon-free, um, uh, quick spiel, if you will, um, in the amount of time it takes to get from one floor uh, to another. So let's say that you're on a tree board and you get uh, on the, the elevator on floor one with the newly elected mayor of your town, and you're going to floor two or three in City Hall there, and the mayor turns to you, introduces him or herself, and says, so what do you do? You want to take that opportunity to say, well, I'm a member of you know, this town's tree board, and we contribute to the quality of life in our town by planting and caring for trees, or whatever it is that you happen to do. So the idea here is that an elevator, in an elevator speech, you can clearly articulate what it is you're all about. So good tree boards have, uh, uh, are, have articulated an elevator speech that conveys their message in, again, concise, jargon-free way. I think that in order to live their mission, tree boards also have to understand the circles of influence and the circle of concern. And this is adapted from uh, Stephen Covey again here. Um, the actual uh, uh, visual is on the left side of your screen here where it says, uh, we have a fairly small circle of influence. We probably have a large circle of concern. I might be concerned with a lot of things, but I don't have influence really over that many of them. But what I desire to do is reflect it on the right side of the screen. I want to grow my circle of influence. That doesn't mean I want to be concerned about more things. It just means I want to be influential on more things that I'm concerned about. So if you're a tree board and you're interested in a whole bunch of things in your city, but you're not very influential, then there's a, a disparity in that ratio. What you want to do as a tree board is become more influential so that you can better address the things that are in your circle of concern. Habit two. Habit two is that a tree board has a vision for where they want to go in their community. Now, the idea here is that, that they understand where it is they want to go, in other words, what they're trying to achieve as a tree board, a vision. So a vision is a, an, a, under, an end statement, if you will, of the desired condition you're trying to achieve. So a uh, for example, a more livable community where trees provide um, uh, maximum benefit. That's a vision for a tree board to want to try to strive to. In that vision, they understand their limitations in getting there, which might be time, might be money, might be personnel, might be a lack of respect or trust or any of those other factors that we've already talked about. Successful tree boards know not only where they're going, but why they're going there. So if I were to ask you, why does your tree board exist, you might tell me, well, we exist so we take care of the trees in town. And that wouldn't be incorrect. But why? Why do you care for the trees in town? Well, the reason why is because they contribute to the quality of life in our community. They make our community a better place to live, work, and play. So in other words, a city a tree board, to be most successful, most effective, you need to have a plan, and you need to understand the why. Know your why. This comes into the whole realm of strategic planning. 
In strategic planning, um, you, you're probably familiar with strategic planning at some level or another. There's a lot of different pieces to it, long-range planning, short-range planning, mission and mission we've talked about, goals and objectives. But really for a tree board, what you're most interested in is the annual plan of work. I think the roadmap and those accompanying signposts for how you implement your urban forestry plan in your community. One of the things I encourage the tree boards that I work with to think about is to make sure your short-term plans are flexible enough to allow you to be opportunistic. So what do we mean by opportunistic? Well, let's say I am a wealthy citizen in your town and I come to your tree board and say, you know, I, um, I think this city uh, trees are important. I'm going to give you $10,000. What would you do with it? Well, you don't want to be sitting on your hands looking at each other in a meeting say, oh, we got $10,000. What should we do with it? You want to have that already in plan. Have that plan in your back pocket that what would you do if a wealthy individual gave you your tree board $10,000? You should already know immediately that if we had $10,000, we, we would do this um, you know, anti-topping campaign, or we would do this tree planting project, or we would do this uh, homeowner education uh, fair, whatever it happens to be. You want to know, uh, you want to have your long-term plans. You want to know what is where you're going, but you want to be flexible enough to be opportunistic. That's an important part of strategic planning that a lot of tree boards forget. Habit number three, they use time effectively. Um, I mentioned this uh, earlier, a colleague of mine, Mark Smiley, said, uh, volunteers have time to give, not time to waste. The worst thing you can do in your tree board is to invite some influential citizen to join your tree board and then have them leave because they think their time is being wasted. Good, effective tree boards spend their time not just on the urgent decisions that they need to make, but the important things. Now, when we talk about this, the notion of what's important versus what's urgent, we understand that, that things like long-range planning and checking in to see how your people are doing, that's important. It may not be as urgent as trying to get your budget together on time or trying to make sure the trees are ordered and arrive on time or whatever it happens to be that you're working on. But you want to look for ways to use time effectively. So if you're going to be, have, be an effective tree board, you've got to use time effectively. Well, how do tree boards spend their time? Well, the majority of them spend them in meetings. Studies have shown that most managers spend 25 to 30 percent of their time in meetings. But 75% of people have no training on how to conduct an effective meeting. Meetings are expensive, both in terms of time or money. And like I said, even volunteers who you aren't paying need to have their time respected by having well-run uh, meetings. So what makes a, a tree board meeting bad? Well, starting late, not having an agenda, everyone talking at once, nobody talking, one person doing all the talking, and ending late. These are just a couple of examples of uh, what makes a tree board meeting go bad. I encourage tree boards to have an agenda, and if you don't have anything on the agenda, cancel the meeting. There's no sense in wasting people's time having them come to a meeting that doesn't have a particular point or doesn't have goals that you're trying to establish or accomplish with that particular meeting. And it's important to, to uh, start a meeting uh, late and to end it on time. Make sure people's time is valuable, particularly uh, because tree board meetings tend to be during the evening. So if you run late, you're cutting into people's uh, uh, family time or people's uh, sleep time, let's say. Uh, and, and that's really a, a, a good way to, to lose good tree board members if you, you can't end a meeting on time. So start a meeting on time and end it on time. So what makes a meeting good? Start and end on time. It accomplishes something. It allows for open participation. People feel that they are contribute. Um, a good meeting makes you look forward to the next one. Now, think about the last meeting you went to and whether or not you left that meeting looking forward to the next one. And chances are you probably didn't, which goes to really say how difficult it is to really run a good meeting. But it's very, very important that you find ways to run good meetings. Let me give you some advice on how to do that. First of all, Know your agenda. What is it that this meeting has to accomplish? What are those uh, critical deadlines that have to be met that are coming up in whatever your tree board is responsible for? Keep it on time and keep it on track. 
encourage people to participate. It needs to be balanced. Oftentimes we see tree boards are driven by a couple of really strong personalities, type A if you want to call it that. But it's important to let everybody on that tree board have their say and to be heard. And then seek feedback for improvement. It's, it's, I think it's always good to do a process check. Check into the meetings and uh, check in with your members rather and see how did they like the meetings? What, what's gone well? What, what did people like about them? Let me give you a little, um, a little recipe, if you will, for how you use time in a meeting. And um, this is a, a little chart that I came up with years ago when I started teaching this particular topic. That if you think about uh, what it is you do during a meeting, um, there should be a ver variety of things in your meeting. So, for example, you should spend time on your vision, making sure what it is you do is, is aligned with your vision. You should spend time planning and talking about your goals, making sure you're meeting those goals. You should spend social time at your meetings. And you, know, you might think, well, we don't exist to be social. You don't, but there's certainly a, there's a social component to volunteerism that is very well valued by people who volunteer. And so um, that might mean, you know, having a, starting your, your occasional meeting with a potluck dinner, or it might mean somebody brings brownies, or whatever it happens to be. The idea here is you need a social component uh, to that. Maintenance. How are you maintaining the details of the organization, the, the many uh, factors that, that you're concerned with? Policy making. What's the sort of the longer, broader uh, things that you have going on as a tree board? And then finally, firefighting. Now, firefighting would mean putting out those quick fires, things that have to be dealt with that are, that are the urgent things that I mentioned earlier. If we were to look at uh, your last meeting um, uh, and think about, you know, how much actual time did we spend on these sorts of things? Now, I've given you what I think would be an ideal percentage in the left, uh, the middle column there. But if you look on the right column, it's all questions. So. Think about your tree board or your last meeting you attended. How much time was spent on firefighting, putting out those urgent things? Probably for many of us, that sometimes is like 40 or 50 percent of a whole meeting. But it's really important that you balance out your time in, in meetings with some of these different aspects so that you can truly be effective. Number four. Effective tree boards practice succession planning. Now, what I mean by succession planning is that they know what comes next. What's the succession to whatever project they're working on or whatever people they have working on, on them. So if you're um, into a, a huge project with, with your tree board, um, some of you at least should be focused on what's the next project that you're going to do after this one is completed. It's important for you to understand that you can't uh, just focus on what you're doing without thinking about what's coming next. Now, that also involves the people as well. So if you've got a tree board of seven people and you might be working together, well, realize that those seven people aren't always going to be on that tree board and, and there needs to be new people coming along that, that support your mission and that believe in what it is you believe in um, to uh, uh, advance urban forestry in your community. So you want to think about who comes next, about cultivating uh, project volunteers to become program contributors. In other words, what I mean is you can sponsor a volunteer tree planting and have a lot of people show up to plant trees. But you know, you really want people to go from that idea, yeah, I'll sign up to plant trees, to yes, I'll come um, to the city budget hearing and advocate for your tree budget. In other words, they show up on a day to do a task, great. But if they can become your supporters, that's uh, even more important. So you need to think about who comes next and then how are you training those people? How are you giving them an orientation to what it means to serve on a tree board? So here's a little bit of a, uh, a model of how is it that you uh, draw an organization. So in the center here you have a board. Um, I'm not sure if you can see my arrow on the screen. I'm going to mouse over here. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But in the center of this sort of bullseye design here, you have the board. The board um, is the, the, the fixed number of people appointed by the city council, and it's the people who have the responsibility for carrying out the, mean, the um, ends and the means of the organization. Outside of that, you have another ring, which would be committees. So those would be people who 
uh, maybe they're former board members or maybe they're just interested people that are willing, they're not serving on the board, but they're supporting what it is you do, and so they're willing to help out. Outside of that, the next ring is advisors, people who uh, aren't on a committee, that aren't on board, but, you know, they, they advise you. Um, they might be people who are uh, wealthy or influential in your town. They might be former uh, board members who aren't playing an active role in the board but are available to advise. The next ring out are supporters, people who, who they don't advise you, they don't help contribute to what you're doing, but they support what it is that you know that you're doing. And then finally outside and probably the biggest group is the people who know you. They know about you, they know that you exist. So the idea here is that, you know, where do you where does a tree board go for new board members? Well, really it should go to committees, members or advisors or maybe supporters. You don't want to pull somebody who just knows about you and put them already all the way onto your board. Also, when someone leaves a board, you don't want them to go all the way to the outer rings here to just people who know about you or support you. You want to keep them in, in closer to you in, in uh, serving on a committee or, or uh, being an advisor to, to what it is you're trying to do. So this bullseye kind of helps you, or this graphic rather, just sort of helps you think about how do you build an organization for long-term uh, lasting effectiveness. Habit number five, they make connections. Effective tree boards connect their cause to other city uh, issues. Now you heard me several times so far this evening talk about livability and I would argue that that is one wagon that every tree board should hitch its star to. Uh, trees in communities are about livability. They make our cities more livable but they also make and save money so there's an economic factor. They also contribute to public safety, so there's a public safety factor. It's important that trees in cities are seen as contributors to other, other societal goals. Uh, the most effective tree boards connect with other people outside of their community forestry operation who can help advance their cause. That might be you know, somebody who works at the town newspaper, for example, or it might be a banker, or it might be uh, the mayor's mother-in-law, for all I know. But the idea here is that, that there are supporters, the, the tree board has made connections with other people to support and advance their cause. And again, that comes back to this whole di idea of leadership and exerting leadership by having a tree board that is well connected. So urban forestry and tree planting really contribute to a lot of places in, um, or a lot of aspects of community life. If you were to look at uh, one definition of sustainability is that sustainability has a triple bottom line of thing, something that's good for the economy, that's good for the environment, that's good for the community is called sustainable. Well, I would argue that urban forestry is all those three things. Uh, urban forestry really is something that can contribute to the economy, to crime prevention, to livability, to public safety, and really to protecting the environment, protecting the natural resources upon which we've built our cities. Habit number six, hang in there, we're almost done. They value process as well as product. Now what I mean by this here is that they pay attention, successful tree boards pay attention to capacity building activities and those are just as important as production. In other words, it's important to plant trees but it's also important to have the capacity to plant trees to have the funding, to have the volunteers, to have the, um, the operational means to be able to, to do uh, tree planting. Tree boards that are successful also plant ideas and they plant ideas through things like having a board retreat, uh, having strategic planning and these process things can have as much of a, a benefit, as much of an impact as a tree planting uh, is, or tree planting can at a community level. So is your tree board about friend raising as well as fundraising? Think about that. You want to have people who support you. You want to have friends just like you want to have money. Are you planting ideas as well as trees? Are you cultivating people as well as trees? It's important um, that you spend time on this building capacity for who and what comes next as well as focusing on uh, your current projects. The other thing I look at is, you know, are you focusing just on today or what's in front of you or are you sort of thinking outside the bark? And I use that term uh, to, to emphasize that you need to be thinking about more than trees. You need to be thinking about 
people and about livability, and you need to think about uh, how do you have a greater influence on your city more than just by planting trees. Habit number seven, the last one, is successful, effective tree boards desire to inspire. The most effective tree boards realize that they can't do it alone. They must inspire other people to act. They are tree boards. They're groups of people who have influence. They get other people to help. And they understand the magnitude and complexity of community forestry. Uh, I think what we have to understand about what it is that we do at the tree board level, it's, it's complex. And it's complex for two very specific reasons, in that urban forestry deals with the two most complex organisms on Earth, trees and people. So it's a complex thing. I mean, we don't just plant trees and expect them to survive. We don't just plant trees anywhere in the city. We put them in the right places. So you know, it takes a lot more than, than people think. There actually was a book out years ago called The Simple Act of Planting a Tree. Well, I hope, you'll, you know, I hope that you would agree that tree planting really isn't that simple. I mean, think about it. You have to select the right species for the right place. You have to analyze this site. You have to understand the soil quantity and the quality. You have to understand a site, exposure, runoff. You have to know your species and, and what grows well in that, that uh, hardiness zone, for example. Not as simple as it might sound. I think it, uh, successful tree boards also involve the next generation. It's really important to, to understand uh, the value of, of youth and getting youth involved with uh, the, the environment ar around them. Uh, I'm fond of saying that today's uh, average fifth grader knows more about the Amazon rainforest than they do about the trees in their own community. Sad to say, I'm not disparaging the concern about the Amazon rainforest, certainly important, but so are the trees right around us. I think successful tree boards also understand leverage. And let me tell you a little anecdote to talk about leverage. In the book, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer uh, by Mark Twain, uh, Tom is uh, assigned the task one Saturday of painting, or more appropriately, whitewashing his aunt, his aunt Polly's fence. Now, of course, Tom would rather be doing anything than working on a Saturday, and his friends came by and started to kind of taunt him. And Tom had an idea. And that idea was that he had to change his perspective to think about uh, painting that fence as the absolute best thing he could be doing that day. And so he went about painting that fence as if it, there was nothing he would rather do. Well, all his friends saw him painting that fence, and they wanted, then wanted to do that because they saw how much fun he was having. Well, he made them pay for the privilege of doing that, and by the end of the day, he had collected an apple and a... Uh, some jacks and marbles and whatever other trinkets uh, uh, little boys and girls uh, had in those days, and he's sitting back underneath the shade of a tree watching his friends do his work for him. What does this have to do with urban forestry? I think it's the same thing at a tree board level. We want to get other people to do our work and pay us for the privilege. So we want other city entities and other people to want to plant trees rather than us just doing it ourselves. All right, so that's the seven habits of highly effective tree boards. Uh, let me conclude uh, this presentation this evening by talking about where do you go for help? In other words, uh, now that I've convinced you that you want to be more effective, uh, how do you get there? Let me give you a, a couple of different uh, areas. First of all, think of your tree board as a, a nonprofit board, a not-for-profit, because that's what you really are, a not-for-profit board. Um, you want to be able to think about uh, the, those things that really apply to any group. I, mean, I talked about group dynamics. And so those, th those things that are, are designed to help uh, ach boards achieve more. One of those things is a book by John Carver that's called, books, that's called Boards That Make a Difference. would encourage you to, to get and read that book. There's also nonprofit assistance organizations. Um, we have one here in my home state of Oregon that it's a, it's a nonprofit organization that is only designed to help other nonprofit organizations. That's their whole meaning of existence. And so what they do is they have seminars about how to have an effective board, how to keep good books, um, uh, you know, how to deal with legal issues, whatever it happens to be. So seek out organizations that are available to help uh, nonprofit organizations. The next would be extension and state urban forestry programs in every state. There's uh, the, 
the uh, land grant university extension program and state urban forestry agencies that have urban forestry efforts that can help you be more effective. And then the last two, which I'm going to spend a little more time on here, is online courses and webinars and Tree Board University. And these are a couple of resources that you can use to uh, become more effective. Uh, <clears throat> there are a lo lot of online courses that you can learn more about the, the field of urban forestry. I teach one at Oregon State University. This is a college level course, Forestry 350. It's offered completely online, uh, fall and winter quarters at OSU. Uh, but there's also monthly webinars that are out there that are free. Um, whereas you got to pay for the college course I teach, but there are some free webinars there. Um, the uh, Urban Natural Resources Institute, um, unri.org, is a U.S. Forest Service, and it's actually there in New England, not too far from you. I think it's in Connecticut, if I'm not mistaken, or Massachusetts. Massachusetts, I'm sorry. It's in Massachusetts, and it is. Uh, uh, they have a, a monthly webinar. It's an hour long. I think it's. Uh, I think it's on Wednesdays. I'm not positive, but. Um, they have a variety of topics, and not only that, they archive all their old webinars. So you can go right there and um, to that website and listen to uh, archived copies of, of previous webinars. And then the Alliance for Community Trees, which is a nonprofit national group that promotes uh, volunteer and nonprofit tree planting organizations, uh, actrees.org, they have uh, a monthly webinars as well. I wanted to talk a little bit about Tree Board University. Uh, Tree Board University is an online training resource for members of tree boards all across the U.S. It was a national uh, project that was funded by um, the U.S. Forest Service and was created uh, by a team of about a dozen people from a, a, around the country, including uh, Kate Ferrer from there in Vermont. And uh, we created Tree Board University uh, with eight content courses, and I won't read those because you can see them on the screen. But the idea here is that this is a site that you can go to. It's free. You sign up. You work your way through these eight modules. You can get a certificate at the end. Um, but it's designed to give you all the tools that you need to be an effective member of a tree board. So one of the ways we designed Tree Board University was that if your mayor appoints uh, someone new to your tree board or your city council appoints someone new to your tree board, you can give them this website, send them to that location, and have them go um, immediately and uh, learn what it takes to become a tree board member and then by the time they come to your first tree board meeting they've got all this stuff down pat they know uh, what it's all about to be a tree board member and they're ready to serve in each tree board university course and there's a screenshot uh, there on the screen uh, there's some text to read there's a short video clip there's links to longer video segments some articles there's suggested activities and because this is an institute there's a quiz uh, you got to take a 10 question multiple choice quiz to get from one module to another. But Tree Board University is a great uh, resource that you could use to advance uh, what your tree board is trying to achieve. So <clears throat> some final thoughts to, to consider. I hope I haven't uh, overwhelmed you with all these ideas about how to be more effective. Uh, the reality is, is that there's no such thing as a perfect tree board. Um, and that these habits that I've talked about here are really what each tree board should should strive for uh, and should grade themselves against. Um, but if you want to have a, a greater influence over the trees and, and over the livability of your community, these are the kind of things that you want to consider. But we also realize that these concepts I've covered tonight really are, they apply to any committee board or organization we belong to. They're not uh, unique to uh, tree board situations. So I hope that uh, what I've been able to do this evening is give you a, a glimpse at what it takes to become a more effective tree board, whether you are a current or a former or a future member of a tree board in your community, that uh, you know, feel free to go back and look at these uh, items and, um, and review them and you know, maybe uh, have a, an education time with your own tree board and, and go over some of these and talk about this and sort of assess how you're doing and, and give it some thought. Uh, Caitlin, I think I'll turn it back over to you. Well, super. Thanks so much, Paul. That was that was wonderful. I just wanted to see, does anybody have any questions for Paul? Let's see, we've got a, a big thank you with three exclamation points from Dave. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, I guess uh, with that, we will uh, will conclude tonight and. Uh, 
Paul, again, thanks so much. Uh, Kate and I were just saying we're taking this facilitation training right now, and uh, a lot of what you're saying is, is kind of a common theme as part of that as well. So I really appreciate all the thoughts you had. Yeah, I think, um, I think a lot of these are very practical uh, things to think about. And, you know, we don't, I, I guess my point is that we don't always take these concepts and transfer them to our situations that we find ourselves in. But they are very transferable concepts. I mean, all of this, you know, I just took the, the seven habits, which is really sort of personal growth and development, and said, okay, how does that apply to uh, a group situation, and how can we uh, make, uh, you know, make our boards more successful as, as a result? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and so thanks, everyone else, for, for signing on tonight and participating. Um, if you could... Uh, click on the link Kate's posted in the chat box, a link there. would love your feedback on tonight's, um, tonight's uh, webinar. And um, also tune in for next, next month's webinar, April 17th, same time, same place. And uh, Gary Johnson and Chad Giblin will be presenting on community gravel beds, beds for bare root planting. So great. Thanks so much, everyone, and uh, have a good evening. Thank you.